Hello there, my name is Brandon and welcome to part two of our three part series focused on making isometric pixel art in Clip Studio Paint. In the previous video, we started building this room design using our own custom isometric grid. And in this video, we're gonna finish the environment by filling it with some objects and characters. So let's get to it. As I mentioned in the previous video, this room is gonna be styled like a bedroom on board a spaceship. And so the first thing I'm constructing is a bed off in the corner. Just like we did with building the platform for the room, I'm starting this by creating two isometric rectangles on the grid and joining them together to create a box for the bed frame. From here, I'm shading the box with a light, medium, and dark side following the same order as the walls, except I've selected colors that are a full step lighter so that this object really pops out against the background design. To make it a bit more interesting, I've duplicated another layer of this frame to create a headboard and then kind of play around with the line work for a while. And I'm also trying to create some detailing by introducing various colors from the palette. You know, even though the bed frame is a boxy shape anyway, I always find that boxy shapes are kind of the most reliable thing to start from, uh, even when you're making things other than boxes. Like for the pillows here, I've started with a small box that follows this perspective, but then by removing the hard edge that's running through it and kind of rounding off the outer line work, it's possible to turn that into a softer shape. And because it was built from that grid, we know that it's oriented in the right way within the scene. For this object work, I generally start with the line tool to lay down those major construction lines. But then I like to switch over to the dot pen for the single pixel work of the finer details. The dot pen is found as an option under the marker header of the pen subtool. And it's already locked in as being an exact one pixel brush. And I just find it to be the most responsive and straightforward option for drawing out pixel art. A lot of the appearance here is also about erasing line work that's already been put down. So I'll often quickly flip between the pen and the eraser by keeping my fingers kind of hovering over those shortcuts. And so I definitely recommend like getting a feel for the shortcuts and keep in mind that you can assign your own if you want as well, just to make them into something maybe more intuitive for you. Or if you wanted to have like your most frequently used ones next to each other, you could do that too. Now, speaking of that dot pen, I'm actually using that entirely to sketch out a rough foliage shape for that upper level garden area. I'm starting by creating a rough silhouette in a dark green shade, and then slowly dotting in lighter greens on top of that to act as highlights of the individual leaves. Notice how there's no dark line work around this silhouette. Uh, we're actually just gonna let the dark green kind of become the line work after the lighter shades are placed on top. Once I have that singular piece of foliage in a good spot, I copy paste it into place and then bump it along with my arrow keys following that isometric angle until I find a nice spot where they can kind of sit together rather seamlessly. The rest of that row follows suit and uh, just like that, we've kind of quickly populated this garden from a singular asset. The way I'm gonna give it a bit of variety here though is by mixing in different colors uh, in a few different shapes for the fruits and veggies. Once again, these colors are from a predefined palette that I made called Retro24. And if you'd like to grab it for yourself, you can download it for free from the Clip Studio Assets page. Down on the main level, I want to make a circular table. And once again, we can use our handy grid lines to plan out the curvature of a circle in this perspective. I'm starting by defining a square from a 2x2 two two section of grid tiles. Then using the dot pen, I start rounding off the corners into a curve, treating each of the opposing corners in a similar way. Once this looks about right, I erase the excess to leave a solid circular outline, but sometimes I feel that these circular outlines can still look a little bit jagged. So a lot of times I'll continue erasing singular pixels from the outline to leave kind of a broken line. And I find that that helps indicate where the rounding is without being so locked in as a jagged curve. From here, I duplicate the line to create the thickness of the table, then begin rendering using a similar relationship of the edge and the fill colors, just like the other objects. You'll notice I've also given this a treatment of using colored line work by having the top facing edge of the table outlined in a lighter blue than the bottom edge. And this provides some extra indication of dimensionality. To finish this off, I've added a few items on the table and then created some floor pillows for the seating. Again, using a similar workflow as the pillows that were created for the bed. So I think you can see the trend by now of how much we're relying on this grid in order to construct everything. The isometric viewpoint is such a particular angle, so it really helps to have that assurance that the objects follow those axes as well, um, rather than attempting to try to freehand everything. That's kind of what I find anyway. Uh, one of the risks though, is that it's easy to end up with most of your objects having a similar appearance, you know, being that they're all kind of locked into that grid construction. 
So an easy way that I like to break this up is by introducing objects that are set at 45 degrees with respect to the rest of the scene. And this ends up taking the form of something that's like a top-down pixel art view, where we're just looking at the top and the front of an object, rather than three of its sides like the rest of them. Something like this works particularly well at a corner because it provides a nice flow from one wall to the other. At this point, I'm just doing a final pass through the room now that a lot of the major elements are in place. Um, the next big step is going to be to add a few character sprites, but before that I want to make sure that all the walls and floors are in a good spot, which means some finishing touches here with some surface detailing and some textures. On the floor tiles here, I'm using a light color to give kind of this small highlight edge at some of the corners, and a little bit running along the tile itself. A small touch like this helps to sort of lift the tile up a bit, rather than it feeling entirely flat. And another thing here is that I'm adding a small shadow under the table by making those blue tones one step darker than they were. All right, for the character work, I'm starting by making someone sitting at the computer here. And so the first step for that is uh, just to make the chair, obviously, since it's kind of easier to pose them sitting uh, once they have something to sit in. Um, when working in the isometric view, my preferred method for making a human type character is to draw them out as a silhouette first and then detail the inside, uh, just kind of like what we did with the foliage. So to do this, I've switched over to the Milli Pen, which lets you adjust the brush size, and I'm using a few different brush sizes here to quickly blob in a rough form. From here, I switch back over to the Dot Pen and brush in some singular colors to block out the character features, starting with the face, and then moving around to the clothing and the hair. To finish it out, I'm changing the outline color according to what part of the character it is. So this way, the outline itself becomes kind of an extension of that piece of the character, but it's still providing that separation within the character and against the background. The next one is going to be a cat on the bed. And I've got black cats myself, so they often end up in my work, um, which in this case is particularly simple because I'm actually just doing this entirely as a silhouette. But then I've also added in a couple dots to show their eyes as well. And the last thing here is a small robot above the garden, uh, like maybe it's some kind of automated assistant for tending it, I'm not exactly sure. But for this, I was trying to get a sort of broad cylindrical shape, and then I filled that in with some metallic colors for the body. At one point, I also added a jet trail underneath just to show you that it can fly, but I quickly realized this would be an absolutely terrible design for a garden robot because it just obviously destroy everything. Uh, so I got rid of that, and you know, we'll just say he floats by some other means instead. Lastly, I'm working with the intermediate palette again to find a nice color to use as the background. I've mixed together blue, purple, and gray from my preset palette, and then I'm trying out a few options from the resulting intermediate selection. Alright, well that'll do it for part 2 of this series. We've now got a complete isometric scene, but in order to give it some more life, in the next video we're going to add some small environmental and character animations using the timeline function. So if you've ever wondered about how to animate pixel art in Clip Studio Paint, then stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, thanks for watching.